Well, Annie, thank you. There's a new book written by award-winning journalist Bob Jones called Reporter, and it tells the tales from the trenches of newsrooms in America to reporting overseas. Jones is a newspaper reporter, television anchor, news director, NBC News foreign correspondent, and is now a columnist for Midweek. This morning, reporter for more than 50 years, Bob Jones, joins us in studio. Good morning, Bob. Well, Great to see you. I tell you, it's very strange to be in a TV newscast. It's been 18 years. Eight. So the last time you were in KGMB, and this is the first time you're seeing a newsroom I again. I have never been in KGMB since 1994. Wow. And I'm looking around and saying, I wish I had all these good toys. <laughs> these to big with gadgets all around day. here. Yeah. Well, great to have you this morning. <laughs> uh, you have such a long career, so many interesting stories that you've covered. Of course, one of the most interesting stories you covered was the Vietnam War. And one of the passages in your book talks about how Vietnam never leaves you once you go there. And you saw so many interesting things, very uh, disheartening things at times. What's the one thing about Vietnam that has nef never left your spirit? Oh, the people. I love Vietnamese people, and I always have. And actually, that, that term that Vietnam never leaves you, I have to tell you, I stole that from uh, my wife, Denby Fawcett, your, your former mm -hmm. reporter, and uh, she always so she said that in her book, War Torn. You know, you leave Vietnam, it doesn't leave you. But the people suffered so much. Nobody here has a, an idea. You know, maybe two million Vietnamese died during that war and uh, starved in the middle, caught in the middle of something that most of them wanted nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what really stuck with me. You had a chance to meet that little girl who was injured in that I napalm did. attack. What was it like to meet this person who had really changed America's views on the war? Uh, she was, she didn't speak uh, English. I did not speak Vietnamese. Most of us dealt in English and French over there in those days. And uh, she was just a charming little gal. And she went on to uh, live in Cuba for a long time. And then I believe she now lives in Canada. And you know, so today she's a grown woman, mm -hmm. and what a thing to have to say, I was that little naked girl <laughs> running down the roadway. I have to ask you about your wife, Denby Fawcett. <laughs> Obviously, she was an award-winning journalist herself here at KITV for many years. And Denby really had an effect on your emotions. I mean, the two of you were dating for a long time, and then you weren't dating. And can you talk about that and how she really got to your heart? I tell you, I think uh, my understanding is she has not read that chapter of the book. Uh -huh. uh, I think she told our daughter, she, she was waiting, she was going to feel embarrassed about whatever I said. But yeah, it's true. I was uh, absolutely struck with her the first time I met her. Uh, I said, this is the one. And uh, you know, she wasn't ready yet. I, I was, uh, I'm five years older almost than her. And uh, she had things to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a long courtship. It worked out. We've been married 40, almost 43 years. Oh, well, I know. It's a great marriage. It's great <laughs> to see you two together. Let's talk about your thoughts, uh, lastly, on American journalism. Obviously, it's a, a business-driven uh, industry, and things have changed over the years. Right? I think I, I've made a, a lot about that in the book. That uh, it, When I started in journalism, mostly newspapers then, TV was just kind of in its infancy. Uh, they were owned by individual people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some of them good, some of them not so good, but they wanted to make a difference in their community. They wanted to influence the community. So they spent their money hiring all these people, good people, uh, and then when everything became more corporate or owned by you know outside interests or mostly corporate, it became more a true business rather than a calling. In other words, how much profit are we going to make mm -hmm. this year? And it's certainly an issue that uh, a, a lot of newsrooms grapple with these days, especially with advertising and, and all that sort of thing. Well, and then you notice uh, Newsweek is going basically out of business. Uh, to me, I, I brought these magazines just to mention that, for instance, The Economist is sort of the last of the real mm -hmm. news magazines. There's hardly any ads in there except for colleges and so forth, people looking for uh, people to work. But on the other hand, Two things I noticed uh, this month, for instance, the current uh, Honolulu magazine, they will rent you or lease you uh, a section of their magazine. You can write it. For instance, the Hawaii uh, 
Independent Schools Association mm -hmm. will do a whole thing. They'll call it a supplement. Wall Street Journal, same, same thing. thing. They're doing a thing uh, this week on uh, kind of futuristic uh, styles, and uh, they sell ads around this thing by designers. Well, Bob, it's great to hear your <laughs> stories. I know a lot has changed in American journalism, and it's great to see one of the few true journalists steer, still here in Hawaii Thank you. working and writing your columns. Great to be back in a, in a <laughs> TV newsroom. Come help me anchor in a few days. We'd love <laughs> yeah. it. Well, Bob Jones, the reporter is call, uh, is call, the book is called Reporter. To see this interview again, you can head to the top video section of our website, KITV.com. It is 546. We'll be right back.